cast up some retaining wall pillars out of plaster. I bought this silicon rubber sheet here because plaster won't stick to it. And then I used some weather stripping with an adhesive on one side and made up a bunch of molds and then just poured plaster in. Now these will need to be cleaned up and I don't even know if they'll work but I wanted to give it a try. Well I have these plaster columns that I laid up so what I'm thinking about doing is using them on my retaining wall here obviously they have to be trimmed for height I have my hydrocal columns all cut for size and now I'm gonna have to figure out how to paint them what I think I'll probably do is just use acrylics I roughed up the edges of these columns a little bit with a rasp trying to give them a little bit more life and so now I'm going to go ahead and put that first layer of paint on there and I'm going to use acrylics I'm going to paint them gray you know I'm trying to get a light concrete gray and get that base color down I'm going to take my acrylic craft paint and I'm going to go ahead and mix it up in this cup, add some water to thin it down, start painting my columns. All right, I got my concrete color mixed up, and I don't want to go too dark with the color because I'll probably add an ink wash to the columns after they're painted. So I want to keep the concrete color pretty light. And I'm going to add some water. I want this pretty thin. Very rarely do I use craft paint or just about any paint straight out of the bottle. It almost always needs to be thinned down. And you can see this pretty much has the consistency of skim milk so it's pretty pretty thin that is just right now ready to put some paint on these columns all right get my get my gray color paint these up should probably wear gloves but I never do. All right, so one column painted. Go ahead and set that where where it's going to go, and move on to the next one. I got the base coat on all the concrete columns so I'm going to let that dry and then go on from there. I'm going to let it dry for quite a while, maybe even overnight. Well, I'm going to give my concrete columns an ink wash. I have India ink. I have some water in my palette. Put a drop of ink in there. And I'm going to try that first before I put any more ink in there. Maybe one more drop. I want to coat these columns in the direction of gravity. Of 
If I get some running, that's all right. Right, I think the the ink has soaked into the plaster and it's not going to move any further. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off my stick. I used some tape, just rolled up some masking tape and stuck the column to my stick here. So I'll take this one off the stick and go to the next one. I got my second column. Take my ink. And I'm going to stroke it in the direction of gravity. Make sure you got everything covered. And all these columns will look slightly different, which is good. Get this puddling off the top. All right. See, it has a nice long streak running down it. I'm going to glue these columns in place with Eileen's tacky glue. Now, I've never used this stuff. I have heard about it. I'm going to give it a try. Hopefully it's really tacky. Alright, I don't want to squeeze it out. Now these, or I have a, a seam, I can just align the columns to the seam. So you got a little poking out down there on the bottom. It's supposed to dry clear, but I do not want that. I'm going to try to get that out of there. For these columns that are in between the joints, I have them marked here. I'm going to use a square. Try to get these as vertical as I can. Jackie glue, do your stuff. All right. And just by the nature of laying up these castings, some of the castings are thicker than others, or they might have a slight bow to them. And so I have these jogs in the wall. But I'll just slide these columns up against those jogs, and I can hide that. I have my concrete columns in place on the retaining wall. Now these aren't done. When I finish the scene and then they'll get some additional work. I've installed a column at each break point between the castings and these castings are 11 inches long. 
and I also put a column in between the joints because so I just thought an 11 inch span was just too long and so I broke it up in half with another column so with that done I think my wall looks a little bit better and like I said it's going to get more work but for now I can move on to something else so thank you for watching kind of a short video but adding these columns I think does a lot for my retaining wall so I hope you come back as I continue to work on the layout and thanks again for watching